Good morning and welcome to today's episode of My PI Dream. Today is Monday. Monday. <laughs> and it is uh, build day mm, 43. Build day 43 <laughs> out at the uh, construction site at Villa Feliz. Uh, it's a beautiful morning this morning. Uh, I actually took yesterday off and uh, I didn't do any video. I didn't push any videos yesterday uh, because of course on Saturday night there was a birthday party and there were some, um, well, this is to say I needed to sleep in on Sunday morning. So uh, Sunday I took, the, I took the day off, but I did uh, take uh, the dog back there somewhere. I did take him out for a walk yesterday, so, or, or should I say he took me for a walk yesterday. <laughs> and I think I have a couple of clips inside and I'll push that a little bit later on. So anyway, uh, today the schedule is we are supposed to be continuing uh, with the steel work uh, for the tie beams. Uh, there's going to be several more days of that uh, formwork and then uh, sometime they're actually going to be doing the formwork that goes up underneath. They'll be doing laying the, the rebar, uh, the reinforcement rebar for the floor and then they'll put the wood up underneath. So when we get all of that done, all said and done, then we're going to have one major pour and that's going to be very exciting for me uh, because I'm actually going to have a roof <laughs> over the garage, over the basement. And uh, although I'm not going to be able to drive in because we still haven't dug out and excavated any of the land that takes you down from the street level down to that one. But that will be coming up uh, shortly after that as well. But it's very exciting days to come. So anyway, I want to get out there. I want to get started for uh, today. And uh, I don't know what else uh, we're planning on doing. Probably a lot more digging is going to go on. And one day this week I need to get into town. i got to get doggy some new treats and I want to get a water cooler. I, I need some way to have more water. I'm bringing bottles of water in my little rucksack right there. And I need some way of having uh, uh, large amounts of water because it's starting to get so hot out there and I'm consuming a lot of water. And uh, maybe I can actually plug it into Bahay Kubo and, and have some cool water out there as well. So anyway, I need to get out to the job site uh, before, before the sun gets up too high here. So anyway, without further delay, let's get today's video underway. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I don't have doggy treat, but I made him a peanut butter and jelly sandwich today. Okay. So let's see if he'll eat. You think he'll eat peanut butter and jelly? Yes. Yeah, you think so? What you think, dog? Can you do you like peanut butter? Whoa, my goodness, I get Oh, I I think he likes American peanut butter. <laughs> That's the good stuff. Don't eat it too quick. Good morning. Hi, How are you? I'm going to work. Is it grandbaby? You're Lola? Hello, Dave. <laughs> ah, good morning. good morning. How are you, Ronnie? Okay. You starting already early this morning? Yes, okay. Yeah. <laughs> morning, Roy. How are you today? Good. Tess. <laughs> Good morning, how are you today? Fine. <laughs> I'm so happy to see your beautiful smile this morning. Uh, going to work, yeah. Go, how are you today? Ah. Where's Lola Janet? She, she, you're giving her the day off? Inside. She's not inside? What's for, what are you doing for dinner tonight? Chicken adobo. Chicken adobo? Mm, okay, chicken adobo. Fish, fish, chicken adobo. What kind of fish? Uh, fish with... Is it like the dried fish? Oh, no, no, fish with coconut milk. No, I like... I, 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 fish. Yeah, the next time you do the dry fish, you know, the, the, you know it's like smoked or something like that? I want one of those next yeah, time. Ah, yeah, sinai. Yeah, I like sina, I sinai. That, sinai. Yeah. I have that one. Is it fresh? Yes. yes for yes. dinner? Yes, for dinner. Okay, one of those and the uh, chicken adobo. Yes, yes. Okay? All right. All right, I'll see you later. Have a wonderful day. Morning. Okay. How are you today? How's your head okay? Okay, <laughs> last night. <laughs> Hi, good morning. 
All right, I got, I got to tell you, here, come, here comes the, the Pandasol man. This is the guy that I got the uh, Pandasol from this morning. He must... He, he must be a very busy guy because uh, he makes mul he makes multiple trips early. He comes at uh, about 5:20 a.m. in the morning, and I get I get five a, a package. It's a package with five Panasol, and they're about this big around. And uh, that's that's my help. That was my breakfast this morning. And they're they're two pesos each, so it's 10 pesos for five of the big ones. And then he, he sometimes he has the small ones, and there'll be a pack of five, and they're one peso each. So, and sometimes I get the five and the five, and sometimes I eat all ten. Yeah. Anyway. So anyway, I had a great Sunday yesterday. Took dog out for a little bit of walk. I I actually went out to the site and I uh, watered the plants and uh, I verified uh, we actually have a crew that actually stays out there and they actually uh, did the watering they, they did the watering for me to make sure that <laughs> they did the uh, watering to make sure that the watering was done on all the columns and all the concrete out there and the beams and everything so that got taken care of I saw it was all wet when I arrived out there and I got to take a quick dip in the swimming pool but the main pool out there the pump is broken the the one of the impellers or or one of the devices I, I spoke with one of the repairmen out there because I noticed the water looked like it hadn't been cleaned in a while uh, the the small kiddie pool uh, was perfectly clear but the one on the main pool wasn't so uh, they're actually going they're actually going to Manila and they're going to uh, pick up the part. So hopefully that gets done pretty soon. Because I don't use the pool very often. I use it maybe like... <laughs> I use it on the weekends. Uh, on a Sunday. That's my Sunday, my Sunday break. So anyway, hopefully they get that taken care of. Morning, guys. How are you today? How are you today? Good to see you. Good to see you. Morning. Bye. Bye.
So anyway, you can see everybody is busy as a beaver like they normally are every single day that I show up on the site. Uh, we got the guys doing the, again, continuing with the forms, uh, continuing over here with the uh, steel reinforcement for the tie beams. Can't see too good, but way back there in the back, they're actually continuing to dig the footers, the correct, the, the correct distances and equidistance inside the ground for the side uh, fencing and we just got a little bit of everything going on here so what i want to do i want to take this opportunity is one of my uh subscribers uh asked me to go a little bit more in depth in something that i talked about last week in one of the episodes when i was talking about uh, water and plumbing going inside the house uh, what i mentioned is you want to make sure that you have adequate size of of, of pipe of the uh, the plumbing pvc that's actually coming in and going to the uh, going into the house you want to make sure that it's not too small because what will happen is a lot of contractors will they if you're not around to tell them and 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 explain to them that you want to make sure you have good water pressure inside your house what they'll do is they'll go right from the the entry point which is going to be your meter uh, by the side of the street, and I'll show you a picture of that. We'll, we'll go ahead and run the entire length all the way through. So let's go over and start with the meter. So anyway, this is going to be a typical installation, what you're going to see right here. You're going to have a meter. This is going to be the supply coming in, and I mean, it could be, uh, uh, the inside diameter could be, and this is probably half inch on the inside diameter. It might be five eighths. Uh, you might get a three quarter inch. It, I, I don't know what this, the, the development or the whoever's hooking up your water is going to be but they're going to provide you with a water supply coming in it's going to be metered up here just like this they will install a meter and that's how they're going to determine how much you're going to pay for your water on a monthly basis and then this side over here this is what you're actually going to be connecting to right now this is a temporary connection right here uh, for the construction uh, this is my little hose that i hooked up over here and this is one that the uh, the contract uses for most things like washing clothes and and, and 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 helping you know showering off and doing whatever they need to do on a day-to-day -day basis with the water here uh, so anyway so this is where they're going to tap in right here now what i was saying is from this point right here what you want to make sure even if you have a half inch uh, pipe inside diameter coming to you at this point if the water pressure is good you don't want to restrict it anymore from that point right there going to your house so what they're going to do they're going to come in and they're going to connect up to here and my recommendation is and i'll show you the the uh it's ppr pipe that we have here uh, uh and I'll, it's vespo ppr and i'll show you the pipe that we're using and it's uh there are many different uh grades there are many different uh brands of of uh pipe uh, pvc ppr pipe that you can use for your insulation inside your house let me show you what we have here So you can see, let's see, it says, this is a uh, Vespo. I don't know if you can see the writing on here. It's kind of hard to see, but this is a uh, Vespo. And this is going to be P PPR. And it's, it's hot water and cold water, hot and cold water. So what you're going to want to do when you're actually purchasing your uh, PPR or your PVC, I, I, most of the time you're going to do PPR. PPR is the best because uh, PPR is it's a high quality pipe it is also uh, it's very strong and it's also rated for hot and cold water and uh, the Vespo that I've got right here uh, you, you can see the thickness look at the thickness of the wall inside here So what's going to happen is contractors are actually going to run these inside the walls of the concrete hollow block and you want the strongest possible type of a pipe that you have inside there for uh, in case you have some type of uh, earthquake or or anything that might crack the, the concrete hollow block. Now, uh, they're, they're, this is the typical method that they use when they install in the Philippines. So you, if you got a high quality, even if you have a little bit of shaking and things like that, if you have a high quality, you stand less of a chance of doing damage to your pipes inside your wall. If you have a, if you have a, uh, a cheap brand or a, a, um, a discount brand type of a pipe inside there, 
Uh, some of the minor shakes and cracks that you might have in the wall might actually break the pipe. Then you're going to see water seeping out through the pores of your concrete hollow block inside your house. Then it's a disaster because they got to go inside. And, and it's, it's all fixable because they're going to go out there, they're going to remove the area, the, the concrete around there, they're going to do a repair and then they're going to pour concrete back over again. And then they're going to do the cosmetic repairs on there with the paint and things like that. So anyway, when you're, when you're actually looking, so what we have right here are, are two types. We're going to have a, a third type later on. But right now, when you measure the, the pipe, it's going to be by inside diameter. So this right here, the inside diameter of this pipe is three quarters of an inch and the inside diameter of, of uh, this pipe right here is one half inch. So what we're going to be doing uh, on, the, on the house side, going into the house before it actually gets to any of the plumbing receptacles, we're going to run a standard three quarter inch in most places inside. So that's what we're going to run inside the walls. That's what we're going to run uh, all the way up to the actual point where they're going to be uh, connecting the couplers going over to like the sinks and the uh, the toilets and things like that then we'll go to half inch there uh, but you can see right here we have a, a three quarter inch and we have half inch now what you're going to want to do if you can from that meter that I was showing out there you're going to want one inch inside diameter going to your house you want the biggest amount of volume uh, that you can possibly have coming into your main house so you don't have water loss because what happens is you there's friction loss when water flows through a pipe and the more you constrict the, the size of the diameter of the inside of the pipe the more water loss that you get going in so you could actually start from the street and you could have say I don't know what it is in the Philippines I know what it is in the US we will normally have 80 psi coming in to the into the house at at the meter that's where it will be measured at the meter and then once a, a, either at the meter at, or at a intake valve that comes into your house right on the side of your house and then if as you go in if you were to measure that you running through all whether it's PEX pipe inside your house or or like PPR here or there, there's many different kind of brands that you can use in home construction in the US and, and it's going to be the same philosophy is going to go with when you're building here in the Philippines uh, as you go through when you get to the end user the end item the end device you're going to have uh, say like on at 80 psi at the at the uh, water meter by the time you get to the device you might have you might have like 20 psi of, of pressure loss or 25 or 30 psi or something like that now here in the Philippines the pressure isn't is going to be that high I would say the pressure here I haven't tested it yet but I'm going to say the pressure here is probably somewhere around 30 psi uh, I'm just making a, a, a guess based on what I can feel for the flow coming out of the out of the meter on my water hose out here. So once you go and as you move upstairs, it's going to become critical that you need good volume and good water pressure coming into your house because not only are you going to have loss from friction going through the pipe and you're going to have loss with smaller pipe but you're going to have loss with elevation as you start putting pipes to the top of your house if you have a two-story building the worst place that you're going to have water pressure is in that second second floor and the furthest distance away from the source of the water so these are all things you got to take into consideration and you can mitigate that like i said by putting a larger pipe coming in making sure you have an adequate water adequate water supply uh, pressure and uh, coming in from the meter and things like that. So these are things to look out for when you're actually building a house yourself for plumbing. Let's talk a little bit about the typical plumbing building materials that you're actually going to have when you're building your house, when your contractor is actually going out and providing you with your uh, building material. Again, this, this is the PPR. And let me explain something about PPR. Another reason PPR is, is so much better than th things like PVC when it comes to high pressure hot water and things like that is the couplings that you put on here remember I showed you the couplings the other day and these are all the different couplings that you're gonna have inside here you see all these and actually this this is the one inch uh, he's in preparation for the uh, for the incoming but this, here's your couplers here's your elbows and things like that when they actually make the connection to the PPR pipe they do a thing it's uh, the, I can't remember the exact term it's like fusion welding and when I say fusion welding, it's, it's it, the, the term welding, they actually have a device that goes on there and it looks like a clamp that goes over the PPR pipe and it literally welds the pipe. It becomes one and it's a very good method used for 
any of your plumbing that has any pressurized plumbing that's inside your house. It's much better than using the, uh, the tr traditional, like on PVC, you use the glue. Uh, over here they use, they use just a plain glue, a PVC glue, when they do their connection of like the orange Neltex you, you see over here, this Neltex and this, all this Neltex that you see over here, all right? They'll do just one thing. In the U.S., what we use is a, a primer and then we'll use a glue on top of it and what they'll do, it'll heat up and it'll basically do sort of like a Sort of like a, 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 a it, it basically heats up the the plastic so much that it actually acts like a weld, but it's it's a, it's a very strong glue point. And that's what you use with irrigation pipes, and uh, and like if you're doing in the U.S. if you're doing PEX pipe, they have clamps that go on the end. You'll have couplers, and you put a clamp. And you have a device, and it's calibrated, and you clamp down a little piece of metal across it. And it's it's very popular these days in U.S. construction, but I'm not sure that they do that over here in the Philippines. So anyway, you have the th this pipe over here, and this is going to be used to run electrical cables. This will be electrical, and it's also used for like your plumbing, for your like your toilets, and for any of your wastewater, uh, any of your drainage, non-pressurized kind of things. They'll use the Neltex, but you'll use something like the Vespo right here for all your hot and cold water, anything that has pressure, anything that requires a lot of strength and integrity. I'd like to do, I'd like to thank one of my subscribers, uh, uh, one of my subscribers by the name of Ken. Uh, he's been sending me some offline uh, messages and uh, and with concern about the the basement, the waterproofing of the basement section, things like that. Uh, I will tell you, I don't know everything. <laughs> I, I know very little, let's put it that way, when it comes to uh, when it comes to basement technology. and and I appreciate all the folks who've been sending in information. Uh, on uh, suggestions and information for better ways to actually waterproof the basement. Because you, you know, in the Philippines, basements are, th there are some, but it's the exception. It's not the rule over here. So anyway, what we have to do is we have to come up with a good solution for the one, one and a half, mm, about one and a half to two meters below grade here. And uh, uh, Ken actually sent a great, uh, gave me a great link and uh, uh, there's a, a supplier up in uh, Manila, in the Manila area. And they, they have a product uh, made by the company called Sika. I think, I think Sika is out of, oh, somewhere down below the equator somewhere. And that's not Australia, it's New Zealand. I think it might be New Zealand, I'm not sure. Anyway, the, the product is basically, it's like a waterproofing membrane. Uh, and it's, it, it's sort of like a, a, uh, a painting kind of thing. So what'll happen is you'll do like a, like a primer uh, coat on there and it's like a 50-50 solution of the Sitka uh, solution. It's like a polyurethane, poly, I don't know, it's a like a rubbery kind of stuff and you mix it up just like you would do paint. And you mix a 50-50 solution, then you do a primer base all the way in the area that you're talking about trying to waterproof. And then what you'll do is you'll actually um, do full strength and you'll do it horizontally 
and then you'll do another layer vertically. You'll, you'll end up doing several layers of the waterproofing on there. And they have some suggestions for if you have cracks or if you have uh, any joints that need to be filled. The Sika also has uh, some things that you put on like a caulking gun and you'll fill these and then you'll put this waterproofing over it. Uh, but the, the, the thing that's really neat that I see with some other technologies is they have a membrane. It's sort of like a dimpled membrane. Now, what I'll try to do is I'll try to put some pictures of what this actually looks like. So what you'll do is you'll do the primer, you'll do the final coats of the waterproofing, and then you'll put this membrane that goes over the top of it. And it basically looks like a waffle pad. And a waffle pad will go all the way around. And what that does, it gives you a barrier between the earth out here and the backfill it's going to go up so you're not going to put the earth directly on your waterproofing uh, compound that's painted on your concrete uh, hollow box uh, you're going to have a protective bear that's got all these little cone waffle cones inside there that will help uh, keep the, uh, the the soil and everything and the moisture off of your concrete it's very good technology it's very proven technology Again, it comes by many different manufacturers around the world, but what we have to do here, we have to find what we can, what we can find. That's, yeah. that's a key to a lot of your construction, is going to be what is available to me in the area that I'm building. So uh, my contractor is uh, very familiar with uh, the information I sent to him now, and he's going to make contact with that, uh, uh, that vendor up in the Manila area. Oh, and also... Like I said earlier, it also incorporates the same technology I said that we were also going to do with the perforated pipe that's going to go, and it's also it's it's part of the entire waterproofing strategy uh, to be able to keep your uh, basement dry. So anyway, thanks again, Ken. I appreciate it, and hopefully uh, we have a successful waterproofing uh, uh, basement here in uh, the near future. So something I want you to kind of take a look at and pay attention to is the, you see all these pieces of wood like these right here all the way, they're all cut level. And remember when I was talking about they would be doing some kind of support for the floor, they're going to put plywood underneath the bottom and the, uh, of, the of the pour, uh, you'll have rebar, you'll have uh, plywood underneath it and then they'll do the pour, but they need some way to support all of that weight. And this is part of the support structure is that each one of these pieces of wood that are cut level, you'll see the entire matrix that they have here. And you'll see it a little bit better once we start putting plywood on there and additional support. Okay. Anyway, we're receiving some more rebar, 10 millimeter rebar, and we have another shipment coming in of 16 millimeter rebar. Uh, we're going through rebar like crazy here. This is, this is a big project, lots of rebar being done. Uh, but again, rebar is the, uh, the structural integrity of your cement, so you got to make sure that we have a lot of good high quality rebar in here. We've also got a shipment of cement because we're out of cement. Uh, the cement mix and you can see this the the old one is the uh, uh, the red bags right here uh, and the new one is actually a different brand which is it's a little, just a little bit higher quality a little bit more expensive they didn't have any of the red brand uh, available from our vendor so my contract decided to substitute a little bit higher quality for what we were using back here, which this is actually a high quality anyway because the compression ratio on this one is very good so anyway uh, Lots of good stuff, more building materials coming in, and uh, work goes on.
see, as you can probably see over my shoulder, <laughs> they're cranking up the mixer. Well, I didn't think they were going to be doing any mixing today, and it's like, it's really late. It's, it's like, ooh, let me see what time it is. Oh. It's, it's 421. These guys get off at 5 o'clock, but you know what they're going to do is I saw them pour water into the uh, the base of the columns for the for the back porch and they have to have that poured uh, because they're actually going to be running the the supports the the beams that are actually going to be running to support the uh, back porch along with the rest of the stuff so that's probably what they're doing today I know that's what they're doing Kind of got ahead of themselves a little bit. Uh, you got to have the, the rebar to get all the air pockets out. <laughs> they weren't prepped for that. But they're they're grabbing it now. So they got all the uh, buckets wait waiting to uh, do a pour. They have to be uh, real good with the, the vibrator bar inside there because this is a small column so we want, need to make sure that we get all of the uh, air pockets out as much as possible so it's a smooth, uh, very smooth finish like we did with the rest of the columns inside the, uh, the main building. So you, you can hear them calling for the grout. The grout's going to be that primer for the uh, connection between the, the footer and where the column actually gets started inside there. So we'll be making a thin a thin solution of mainly cement and uh, sand and some water. And then after they put the grout in, they'll follow up with the, uh, the main cement mix uh, with all the gravel and everything. I told you I get excited anytime they do concrete. So I got a nice exciting moment for today. <laughs> well here it is the end of another day. At the end of day 43 here at Villa Feliz. Uh, we got a lot of stuff today. You can see, you can tell the difference between yesterday or actually Saturday and uh, today. Uh, there's a lot more stuff going on uh, on this first floor floor. So they got a lot of stuff accomplished. Very good. And uh, tomorrow, I what I want to do, actually I talked a little bit about the plumbing today. Uh, tomorrow I want to talk about, uh, give you some tips about electrical. I sat down and had a little bit of a talk again with my builder. I have a talk with my builder every day. And uh, we discuss uh, what's going on now, what's going on in the future, and anything that we should be aware of. And some things came up today about electrical, and I'll bring that. I don't have enough time today to talk about it. So uh, I will talk about that tomorrow, which is day 44. <laughs> day 44 at the construction build at Villa Feliz. So I'm going to close out today. Oh, but before I do close out, I just want to uh, give a warm thank you. Uh, to my neighbor in the United States, uh, Greg, and his dear wife, Espy. Uh, my, my wife woke me up at oh dark 30 last night. Uh, I actually got to bed early. I got to bed about 9.30, and then I got a Skype wake-up call around 12.30 in the, in the morning. And uh, she's panicking because her car is not starting. And uh, someone left 
one of the lights on in the car for an extended period of time and it drained the battery. Uh, but she called my neighbor, uh, Greg and Espy, and they came over uh, to the rescue. And again, thank you, Greg and Espy, for taking care of my Asawa. And uh, they got the jump going, and they got the vehicle running again, and she is good to go. Well, anyway, uh, I'm going to close out today, and uh, tomorrow is a new day. Tomorrow is day 44 in the build construction here at Villa Feliz. And it's going to be a lot of the same stuff here, but there's some additional things that they have to pay attention to, and we'll bring that up tomorrow. Uh, so anyway, until tomorrow, uh, if you enjoyed today's video, uh, please give me a thumbs up, please share, and if you have not subscribed, click on that little heart down there in the bottom right of your screen, and you will get notifications when new videos post. So until tomorrow, you have a wonderful day.